Narrow culverts must be approached and crossed carefully to make sure that the towed load does not drop off the end of the culvert. Narrow bridges must be approached and crossed at reduced speed. Reinforced bridges with longitudinal planking should be crossed slowly, making sure that the wheels ride on the planking. The temporary side rails assist in ensuring that the vehicle and its tow stay on the bridge. When crossing bridges with several spans, the distance between vehicles should be such that not more than one vehicle is on any span at one time. When the prime mover and its towed load are too heavy for the bridge or any portion of it, the towed load should be uncoupled and the prime mover and the towed load move separately across the weak portion. In this case, only two spans are considered doubtful. The heavy howitzer is uncoupled and the truck moves across the doubtful span. The howitzer is moved across by manpower. This is the quickest method of moving the towed load. In this case, the strength of the approach span is considered unsafe for both the vehicle and its towed load. The howitzer is uncoupled. And the truck is moved forward. A tow line of sufficient length to give proper spacing is used to tow the howitzer. Men must carry the trail to prevent the spade from catching on the floor planking. The crossing of streams and fords at such depth that the water does not reach the engine and its accessories presents little difficulty when proper precautions are taken. The speed during crossing should be low enough to prevent undue surging of the water. Rushing the crossing usually will result in a drowned engine. When the water is deep enough to reach the fan blade, the fan belt should be loosened before the crossing is attempted. This prevents the fan from throwing water and drowning the engine and keeps the fan blades from being forced into the radiator. Slight application of the brakes during a water crossing will help to keep the brake linings dry. Continued application for a short distance after the crossing has been completed 
will leave the brakes in effective operating condition. This procedure prevents accidents caused by wet, ineffective brakes. As soon as practicable, the fan belt should be tightened. When the bank on the opposite side of the stream becomes slippery from the passage of numerous vehicles, traction may be improved by throwing gravel or brush on the path of the vehicles. Men should be detailed and stationed for this duty. When the bank is very soft or sandy, material such as brush or hay should be used to obtain flotation and traction. The material should be extended for a short distance over the solid footing. The steep approach for this crossing was broken down by the pioneer detail. But a block and tackle must be used to aid in controlling the vehicle. The vehicle is lowered slowly by a detail of men until it reaches more level footing. To avoid the possibility of miring in midstream, the vehicle crosses to solid ground before the tackle is removed. When the stream crossing is followed by a steep climb, the block and tackle are attached before the vehicle enters the water so that immediate application of manpower can be made if it is needed. Where rivers and streams are too deep for fording and a crossing must be made, ponton bridges, ferries, or improvised rafts are the first consideration. However, where these methods are not practicable, motor vehicles can be taken across streams of almost any depth and without probable serious damage when suitable precautions are taken. This requires the complete preparation of the vehicle for submersion. Units of the electrical system which would be damaged by water must be removed or protected. The battery cable is disconnected. The battery vents are plugged and smeared with heavy grease to make them watertight.
the distributor, induction coil, and engine wiring should be removed. The air cleaner should be removed. The air intake to the carburetor should be plugged with rags and sealed with grease. All exterior openings in the carburetor should also be sealed. Where the generator is of the enclosed type, smearing the small openings with heavy grease may be satisfactory. However, where ventilated type generators are involved, they should be removed since it is impossible to waterproof them. The fuel pump vent should be covered with grease. Breather pipes and other engine openings should be plugged and smeared with grease, as well as inspection plates and other points of possible leakage. The vent in the gasoline tank filler cap should be sealed. When other necessary details are completed, the vehicle is ready for submersion. Meanwhile, one man crosses the stream with a light line. This line is used to pull the heavy tow cable and block across. The block is anchored to a tree or other suitable object. One end of the tackle is attached to the front of the truck. In this situation, it is necessary for the towing truck to pull at right angles to the crossing. This shows the relative positions and the riggings involved. Another block is anchored to a dead man to change the direction of pull for the towing vehicle. A tail rope is attached to the back of the towed vehicle. This rope is used to help control the vehicle during crossing and to pull back the tackle for use on other vehicles. The straight ahead position is marked on the steering wheel. Everything is in readiness for the crossing. In this case, a man rides in the truck to steer it. In very deep water, the steering wheel must be lashed in the straight ahead position. Vehicles are towed through as rapidly as possible to minimize seepage of water into the engine and other assemblies. The tackle is detached from the towed vehicle and the tail rope is used to pull it back to the starting point. The vehicle is inspected to see that it has not been damaged. Grease is removed from the battery. The vents are opened and the battery cable is attached. 
All grease seals and improvised plugs are removed. The gas tank filling cap vent is opened. The carburetor is prepared for service. The gasket which was inserted between the carburetor and the intake manifold is removed. The distributor, induction coil, engine wiring, and air cleaner are replaced. The crankcase drain plug is removed and the water drained from the oil pan. The drain plug is replaced and tightened. The crankcase, the transmission, and differential should be completely drained, flushed, and refilled with new lubricant at the first opportunity. The engine is turned over a few times by hand to remove any water from the engine cylinders. The engine is now started. It is obvious that this is a long and tedious job, requiring detailed and careful preparation of each vehicle. It is resorted to only as a last extreme and should never be attempted in salt water. 